Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Legacy is a story of mankind's sojourns through history. It describes one man's incredible journey through several lifetimes, as far back as a million years. His blunders, his triumphs, and many worlds and places where these experiences took place. Five episodes, a million-year-old romance, space battles, intrigue, interdimensional scientific and spiritual principles in life, today's false religious beliefs, and other secrets exposed in detail. Described as a must-read for every truth seeker, a novel 30 years in the making. The Legacy Series author is Robert Maxim. And it's his incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. As a child, Robert experienced several sleep time visits to other worlds and witnessed countless alien craft. These experiences continue to date in both wake and sleep states. Robert has spent over 40 years studying science, religion, and the science of life. He's back with us on This Week in America. Robert Maxim, author of the critically acclaimed Legacy Series, making a return visit. It's been too long since we've talked the last time. Robert, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you for having me back on the show. Oh, always. And we're settled now in our new location. You're settled in yours, so we should be able to do this on an ongoing basis here. A lot of exciting things happening. Talk about Legacy. As I was describing it, I'm thinking... This would make a great movie. Well, that's actually something that uh, very likely could happen. Talk about that because I know this is a dream of yours and it's getting closer to reality. Well, I was surprised when I had a phone call from a company in Pennsylvania and they said, we're going to have a book show and we would like, we like your book. So we would like to showcase it for free uh, because there's going to be a lot of movie producers and representatives Going through, uh, through the sh- through the uh, uh, convention that we're yes. going to have. So, lo and behold, two days after the convention, I get a phone call from them, and there are three movie companies that were interested in the book. So immediately started the process of uh, putting together uh, docu- documentation, pictures. You know, I have all those pictures and 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 movies. They fall in love with it. They want to make the movie, so I'm now in the screenplay uh, facet. Uh, the screenplay would take anywhere from four to six months to complete, and once it is, and with a book review, it will be up to the production company, and I think it's going to get off the ground. There will be a movie for sure. You know, that's so exciting because we've talked about this in all the years that we've done programs, that that was sort of the ultimate goal for you and for legacy fans. This would make such an excellent motion picture. And it looks like that's going to happen and we'll give you information throughout. In fact, if you go to uh, Robert's website, which is dot com, you can follow along the socket. You can follow him on Facebook as well. And all those links are at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. On the program, as we always do, we take your questions. We encourage questions for our next visit with Robert. So if you go to our website, uh, the comments, you can ask a question. You can go to Robert's website and do the same. Robert, it's been a while. Uh, are you ready to get back in the saddle and uh, answer some tough questions? You've got some good ones tonight. I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's do it. Question number one. You said death was an opportunity, but we are taught to dread it. Explain. Well, um, death is not what most people think it is. Uh, We come here to feel our lower nature and educate it. Uh, and then we leave to receive higher learning, and then we come back and continue overcoming it. That's the process of reincarnation. So this is just what we're experiencing now. It's just one of thousands of living dimensions in our soul, and it's not necessarily the highest one. Uh, what that entails is that during death, we actually join with other levels of consciousness and carry out with life until we have to return and take care of this level again. So uh, imagine imagine that, uh, because I've had several uh, death experiences in this life, I've had actually three. So 
most people wonder, well, is life continuous? Well, yes, your consciousness continues. Uh, the body sleeps. The mind is still awake. You can see everything. Uh, to cut it short, because I know that there's a lot of questions, uh, consciousness is able to incept everything that happens during that travel up to another dimension, to the tunnel, to everything. Um, this is necessary so that we can evolve, like I mentioned, this lower level that we have. At these different dimensions, we have lived before. So we have lived in this physical dimension many times. We have lived in this higher spiritual dimension many times. As a matter of fact, most of us live under 100 years in this dimension. But what most of us don't realize is that the majority of living happens in these spiritual dimensions. Where do you think that we go when we sleep? We're not here. We're outside of this, uh, of this body. So already, one-third of our life is not spent here. Uh, in a spiritual dimension, you could spend a thousand years before you return. So where do we live the most? Not here. Where's our real life? Up there. Interesting, the comparison between sleep, which I never looked at it that way, and uh and death. Interesting. Uh, Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, he's author of the Legacy Series. We talk so much about it, and I want to make sure that you go to Amazon, go to Robert's website, get all the information, and enjoy the Legacy Series. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to enjoy it in the theater near you here at some point coming up in the uh, immediate future. Question number two for Robert in our program tonight. The program is This Week in America. Is our journey here better and more successful if we are in an organized religion? Hmm. You know, it could go either way. Uh, we must depend directly on God and being sincere. We should not depend on another man's word or beliefs. What if they're wrong? Religion interprets and limits your understanding of God and creation for you. That's what religion means. It's the belief of a group, so it has to be limited. They tell you what to believe, and your only choice is to take it or leave it. Religions also will set you apart from the rest of other beings and beliefs instead of teaching to tolerate and unify with these other beliefs. Now, to put this into perspective, this is just planet Earth. We have 43,000 different Christian beliefs. 43,000. I was going to ask you to repeat planet. that. That's a lot. And each one thinks what they're talking about is the only accurate interpretation. Okay, so now let's take this out of the solar system. There are bazillion, bazillions of aliens out there with different beliefs. So those beliefs are not in tune with that with our religion, for sure. So just take a look at the scope of how much we're isolating ourselves by, by just being stubborn that we have the truth. Didn't Jesus say to pray in the closet, in the closet of your own soul? Didn't he tell us to love ourselves as our brother? If you go pray in a public place and think of your brother as being lost or evil and that you must convert him or her because they believe different than you do, are you then not violating Jesus' commands? Now, if so, are you saying that you're better or worse off in a faith if you're subconsciously sinning in this fashion? Is that really being more successful? No, not really. You know, remember, no sin is higher or lower than another. So wherever you are, whatever you believe in, we're, we're prone to error, and there's no belief that will make it any better unless you practice sincerity with yourself. The only way to eradicate error and eradicate sin is to 
No, I could put it no better way than, than to say this, mind your own life and know exactly what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Don't worry about the other person. You've got plenty to deal with yourself. So sin is what you make it. Sin is what you have inside. Get to know it. Get to conquer it. Nobody, no belief will take that from you. Only you can overcome that. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. We're taking your questions. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and submit those in the comment section. Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com, a place there for comments and questions. You can ask a question as well, and we will address it on the next program. Next uh, question, explain more about the role of past lives on the current one. Is it possible some of my struggles are from a past life? If so... How can I best deal with them? Everything we are today is the past. Every thought, every idea, every knowledge, every desire. All struggles are from past lives that are replaying now in the present. We just can't have these events get us down or worried. So don't dwell on the negative just do positive, creative things and want nothing for yourself always. Give all for others. Don't fear. Don't give in to anger. Desire denial and deny desire. That is the best way that you can deal with things. And as I said in response to the previous question, you have to know yourself. You have to be dead sincere with yourself. If you're not, you're lying to yourself. You have to know why you fear, why you anger, why you desire. And if you just give in to it, you're pretty much saying, well, I don't care what I feel. It's not important. And so you're lying to yourself. So therefore, how to best deal with your struggles from past life is to know what you have inside, what your feelings are, and overcome them. When you do that, knowing that you are repeating your past, whatever you're doing now that's wrong is what you did before. That's why you do it. So that's the best way to deal with it. Next question is an interesting one, as they all are, different levels of, of interest here. As I'm reading these, it's like I can't wait to hear the answers. Is there a place where we can spend the rest of our lives through repeated reincarnations? goes on to ask, I'm thinking of heaven or hell. We are always there, just in different bodies. And I guess the concept that we will end up forever, for eternity, in heaven uh -huh. or hell. Is it possible we do just in, and go through different reincarnations in those in heaven and in, in hell as well? You know, this listener has got it. Uh, we are always there, let's say, in that heavenly place. We always are. A part of us is a higher consciousness is, although your mind is only aware of just this dimension here. Your mind can tune into these other bodies or dimensional coexistent planes of existence, and this is what happens when we die. We actually attune to this other higher consciousness. We attach ourselves to another mind level of ours, uh, and that's the reason why we feel different. This is why when people have these death experiences, they feel, they feel relieved. They feel great. They feel at peace, tranquil. Why? Because they let go of this lower conscious level, this uh, less developed conscious level. Now they're linked to a much higher one. Uh, that higher being is another you. It's living in parallel to you. But you're not aware of it until you die. Now, for the first part of the question, you're never stuck in one level. You're either moving up or moving down. And once you get to supposedly heaven or a higher dimension, guess what? There is going to be another heaven above that will be waiting for you. And then, another, and then another, and so forth. So we do not sit still. Uh, repeated reincarnations, 
yeah, we are re-embodying in this dimension because we need a body here. But in higher dimensions, you don't have a body. You have an energy body, which is different. And it does not need to be gotten rid of like we get rid of the bodies here. Instead, it's with you always. And the more you elevate your consciousness, the more you become integrated with all those consciousnesses. So imagine getting to your to an evolutionary point where all of these consciousness that you have been throughout time, that they all join as one mastermind. That will be, that's what I call the joining. That's what awaits us all. But once that happens, you start the process of evolution all over again into a much higher level. I, I know it's a lot to describe, but maybe in the future I have more time to <laughs> describe this whole process. But just remember that who we are down here is inferior to what we are up there. Okay. And what we are up there is the real us. And we're down here on a training and recovery mission to help elevate this consciousness so it can be up there too. Well, there's so much there, and you'll find such great information, great information at Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. So much there, it will be a valuable resource. And uh, you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and uh, and link on directly. We are taking your questions today. We would love to have yours, so you can submit those by going to uh, our website or Robert's as well. Next question, you've discussed our souls returning. What is a soul? What happens to our minds, intellect, and personalities? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll go back to the previous to the previous answer. A soul is basically a collection of the different levels of, shall we say, mentality or experience, intelligence that we've gathered throughout our evolution. And as I was mentioning, we have a, a lower plane of thought down here. We have a higher one than that. We have a higher and higher and higher. Each of those is a being. Yes, it's, it's, it's a higher version of us. Okay. All through these dimensions. And they are all part of one soul. So how is that? You have one soul and many versions of us inside of it, like a layer cake. That's pretty much what it is. And that's why you can go to any of these levels and all of a sudden you become a different person because you are a different person within this personal soul. The beauty of the soul is when it gets to integrate all those personalities into one, now that's when you become, uh, shall we say, um, a master, an avatar, uh, maybe even call it archangel if we, if we can. But it, just imagine the level of intelligence that that being would have. So this is where we're headed. Anything and everything God created is intelligent and is a soul. Everything, even a waveform, uh, even a thought even a stone. But in each of our awareness levels, its intellect or its intelligence is constantly evolving. Even if we're not there, it's still evolving from one moment to the next. We're only aware of this one. That's our only capability. But you know, once you leave this body behind and you go to these other dimensions, now you are aware of them. And now you can really see from that perspective what you really are. From down here, only one consciousness at a time. In sort of keeping, I guess, with that theme here, uh, this next question, out of all the babies born this year all around the world, are they all reincarnated souls? Are some of them here for the first time? All reincarnated they may be reincarnated from this world or from other worlds or even from other dimensions. Okay. Uh, but they, uh, any, any, any being that comes into a physical body here has done so before. Interesting. I have this picture of a nursery and you're thinking these are all brand new babies here for the first time 
And that's not the case then, is it? No, it's not the case. Okay, I, I pause here to absorb some of the information I'm getting as the people at home are probably doing as well. Uh, past programs that uh, we've done with Robert, you'll find on our archives at uh, thisweekinamerica.us and uh, the, the podcast, and you'll find them on YouTube and the, the past videos as well. What is the significance of what appears to be the government acknowledging the existence or at least the possibility of visitor, visitors from other worlds? Well, they're working on a very fine line because they have they have a deal with specific aliens already, and the best way to keep it a secret is to say that they don't exist. That's really what's going on. Now, you've heard about this huge disclosure phenomena, disclosure movement, forcing the government to disclose. You know, a lot of that is is vented by the same government in an, an attempt to thwart using reverse psychology and the fact that the government is aware and in a deal with these aliens. So that's the best best way to, to hide it is to make people force it open. So first you say that, that they, don't, they don't exist. Then you come you flip and say that there are strange craft around, but then you come back with something else to cover yourself up. And the story just keeps changing and changing. I'm going to be giving a conference uh, February 8th in the uh, LAX Hilton coming up. And that conference, I am going to show stuff that most people haven't seen. Pictures of UFOs made in the USA. Also have pictures of aliens. Yeah. A lot of stuff has been has been hidden, but uh, there are specific channels where you can get this information. There are, all, are there are a lot of amateur video takers who have taken it, and once I release the stuff at LAX Hilton, the stuff is going to hit the news. We'll be watching for that, and that uh, reminds me. Robert has so much going on. We talked about the movie, and we'll we'll touch on that again. But you do seminars literally around the world. You've got the one coming up you mentioned at, at LAX. Any others coming up here in the uh, the next several months? Uh, yes, I have appointments in Florida. I have appointments in Canada, in Spain. I have another one in Australia coming up. That just about takes care of all of my work vacation days. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. That's got to wipe out the calendar for 2020. Sick. Yes. I can't take any time off. <laughs> well, and a lot of those you can't do in a weekend either. So you do need some time off to uh, to travel and prepare for that. So, and again, you get all that information at uh, Robert's website, rgaetan.com. Do you believe in God, the supreme being, the creator? And what are your thoughts on Jesus Christ? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, let's, let me walk carefully here because there's a lot of uh, um, preconceived notion and we don't want to disrupt anybody's beliefs. So uh, let me give this, this a shot. In John 5.39, Jesus said to study the scriptures because in them you think that you have eternal life and they testify of, this is what I want to explain, they testify of one word, emo. Now, emo is translated as they testify of me. That's not what it means. Emo means what proceeds from me, what I say. So, read this correctly. They testify of what I'm saying. It's not they testify of me. So that's the first catch. Okay. That, then he, he goes on to say, and don't be come to me to get like, listen to this. I don't accept honors from man. Now, after that sinks in, what does that tell you about the concept we presently have 
of a Savior in prayer. How well do we know exactly what Jesus taught and why must we believe what others wrongly say about him? Uh, the Master said things very clearly, and he did not, as you just heard, he did not want to be deified, period. Just read that passage again, but be careful with the translation, because he didn't say, testify of me, but testify of what I'm saying. He also said, and don't forget, he said, of myself, I do nothing. It is the Father that does all things. And when he said the Father and I are one and the same, so are we all. We are all the same with Father. We are one. God, I know and I love him with all of my strength and soul, I'll never to part. And that supreme being, that supreme creator, is not the limited being that is being taught. It's much more than that. Jesus is a master. Jesus is someone who is, uh, I am not even <laughs> a grain of sand compared to him. But he is just one being that has made it far beyond where I'm at, where we are at. Maybe in a couple trillion years we will be where he's at. And then where will he be? Infinity in creation is just that. There is no end. And if you say that God is that end, that God is is just one or two levels above us, or three, I don't know, some people say there's seven heavens, so you get to the seventh heaven, and that's it. You have just limited God. He is no longer infinite. So think on that a little bit, and I hope that helps. There's a lot to uh, digest there, and you may want to... Uh Find the, the rebroadcast of this, record it, play it back, and listen to it again to make sure you get everything that uh, Robert is talking about. Same vein, we got some religious questions here. I'm in the process of looking for a new church and pastor. How do I find one that will guide me, not lead me? The best church and the best pastor to guide you is what, what Jesus said. It's the Father within, not another man, not another house. Uh, for the sake of unity, <laughs> I invite you to my house. <laughs> but uh, honestly, uh, I, I don't like to separate beings from one another or set myself up as a guide. I can't do that. That is sinful. Uh, I cannot pick one belief over another. If I did... I will be praising the one and shooting down 43,000 others. Now, how would that look? Uh, this is something the listener must decide by testing the spirit. But remember, if you join a group, you will be limited in knowledge and you will segregate yourself from all others who believe otherwise. So my recommendation is be non-committed, be free, and be as one with everyone else. Let everybody else believe what they will. Don't force your way. Don't feel forced to follow anybody's way. Your Father is within. The small, still voice that Solomon talked about in Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes is, that's your ticket. Don't be without it. That's your, that's your church, and that's your guide. No one else. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, M-A-X-X-I-M. It's the Legacy Series, the Legacy Series available at Amazon. Great information there. It's available wherever books are sold, and you'll find information on Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. You'll look on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Do you read the Bible and if so, which one? Oh, it's not, a day, it's not a day that passes that I don't read it. 
uh, there's almost every hour, every half hour, 15 minutes that I'm not thinking of a pack of a passage, learning from it, applying it to my life. But I read the original. I decipher decipher every word, every letter from that original language. There is absolutely, and this will sound shocking, there's absolutely no printer, no printed Bible that's worth my time. They're all mistranslated. The listener also needs to understand that in biblical times, there were specific idiomatics in the time. And what was the customary belief and wording of the time is not what it is now. And knowing what that meant back then will help you translate today. Uh, what I use is the Blue Line Bible. It's on the internet. And I use that to pick out the significance of words, but I don't stop there. I also use interpretive Kabbalah, and the reason I do that is to be able to get down into the Hebrew language, pick out the values of letters and words, and, okay, so today we use the word internet, for example. 2,000 years from now, people will say, well, internet, yeah, the internet is its kind of what we have right now. We, we have telepathy. We can talk to one another. What does internet mean today? Internet means paid for services. It means uh, maybe some downtimes every now and then. You have to pick a provider. There's a server and a network, network equipment out there. There's a cloud of fiber and streaming services on it. I mean, there's so much to talk about the word internet. It's huge. Think of the Hebrew language the same. Without the Kabbalah, you are unable to get the full gist, the full value of each of each letter in each word. You know, it, the letter T, the letter Tav in Hebrew, for example, is the seal of God. Is His advent coming into our souls? It's it's the going away f- for returning. It is literally reincarnation it means you you die of this world you live in a higher fountain of of knowledge only to return that is just one letter just one letter so now put that letter with the with the significance of every other letter and what did you have you have a chapter so each hebrew letter needs to be in ter- back interpreted with Kabbalah. Uh, it takes some doing, and there are a lot of Kabbalistic masters out there that can help. There are Kabbalistic writings on, bibl- on biblical words. It's, it's, it is just absolutely precious. So if we really want to know what to read and what to learn, well, there you go. There's the Kabbalah, and there's Blue Line on the Internet, and start your research, and make sure you have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, and boy, how how long did it take you to to get to this place where you feel what you're reading now is the true interpretation, uh, the true translation? Well, I started my uh, theological studies back in nineteen back in nineteen eighty two, so. I have been I have been learning all these things since, so it has been almost forty years. Uh, I started getting a much better understanding of this twenty years later, uh, but I have many other things to deal with. I was not as, shall we say, devoted to the time. Uh, starting starting a family kids, right. work, finishing college, finishing the- theology, science, and all of that. It took a lot of time. So once I was done, then I really dived into this. And that's when I started picking up this thing. 
the Bible is full of secrets. You will never, you will never uncover all of them. So the more you study biblical text in its original, you dig up the right translations using these online tools and the Kabbalah. Uh, don't just read it to feel holy. Read it to really dig the truth out. And boy, is, is, your, is your world going to open up? Robert Maxim is our guest on the program. This uh, All of the information we're talking about here tonight, you'll find on his website, uh, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Great information there, legacy series. Robert is the author of that. Uh, Maxim is M-A-X-X-I-M if you're uh, going to do some Googling. Are there religions on other worlds is our next question. <sighs> Where I've gone, where I've visited, the answer is no. Uh, there is no division. There is no grouping, which is what religion does. Segregation, there is no segregation. The, there is, shall we say, a devotion. There is a love and respect for God. And that starts with every being's heart. How sincere are you about what you feel and about your love for the Creator? That's it. That's the only belief there is. There are less developed worlds where, yes, there are, there are religions, there are beliefs, indeed, but uh, they are at our level of development. Worlds above us, no. They have an understanding of God. They don't believe in God. They know God, and they can see it with their instruments, literally. So proof is in the pudding, and they have the proof, and they know, and that's what they're trying to share with us. Next question, and we talked often about this. At a young age, you had the, uh, uh, you had the visions, you had the trips. Uh, mm. When you told your parents that, and let's go back, how old were you when you, you had the first visit? I was 15. Now, when you take that and you s say something to family, to friends, and the question is like that, what was their reaction when you told them? Oh, geez. Uh, it didn't last more than a couple of days before I just retracted and never talked about it again. Uh, it was a horrific experience. Uh, not only disbelief, but ridicule. And um, at school, at school, it, well, it, it never even stopped. Even when I, when I went to college, it didn't stop. It followed me there. It just made my life absolutely unbearable. But uh, I never recounted it. Um, so I spent many years really in, in the shadows. I really didn't say anything until I got married. And then I had the fortitude and the trust to begin to discuss it. And that's when Legacy was born. And the Legacy series you'll find at Amazon. It's sort of the, the foundation for everything that Robert discusses when he's with us on the program. So it, it's a great read. I mean, if you just read it for the pure entertainment, you would be thrilled with it. Uh, and then you realize that this basically is... What, Robert, uh, your story, right? Yes. It's what I went through. I was very doubtful in the beginning. I doubt everything. So I had to prove it. I found proof in the works of others, in the visions of others. Um, I, I actually read reports. And there are a lot of things that actually I came across and I was so doubtful, I even disbelieved that until many years later. Uh, so it took a lot of effort. I guess I took such beating when I was a kid for speaking out. That's why I was so doubtful. I was actually scared of being right. So, And being right is important to you. If you go to the website, 
you will see scientific evidence backing up what Robert is talking about. And that that is crucial to you, isn't it? It's not just you giving me your theory on something or sharing that. You feel with the scientific background that you have, you need that foundation there. You need to be to be right and be able to prove it. The beating was so bad that I had to resort to the, uh, to that degree. And thank goodness that I was beaten up so that I would have the... Uh, uh, the end goal of having all, the, all this evidence. Otherwise, I would just be like many other individuals, just talking and not proving. So they turned me into uh, <laughs> into a fact finder of, 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 the, of the worst kind. Well, and you are, and that's at Robert's <laughs> website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Uh, next question, how did you find out about your past lives? Yeah, you know, it was a surprise. I really wasn't looking uh, for a past life. It wasn't even, I, I, I knew it existed, but it just had not cemented in my, in my mind that it was true. Again, it's part of that beating that I took, that I just took everything off, signed out in a way. But it was when I was 18 years old, um, actually two days after my birthday, that I had my first past life vision. I didn't even ask for it. It just came. And then in the in the days and years after that, it just kept coming and coming and coming. And I didn't ask for them. It just, boom, they were there. Uh, so I started writing them down, writing them down, and they became a legacy. They still continue to this day. Um, but something changed, Rick. About five years ago, not only could I see my past lives, I began to see the past lives of other individuals. Uh, And there are incredible testimonies of individuals who have, um, well, they have confirmed. Uh, It has struck a chord as there have been healings from from a past life readings. I'm not saying that I'm a reader. Uh, like Jesus said of myself, I do nothing. This right. just comes. So people have to realize that they are every every one of us is a channel. You're either channeling your your negative emotions from this plane or you're learning to open yourself up to sincerity to listen to a higher intelligence that can guide you and can show you these things. Uh, So that's where it's at. Um, I'm sure that that's what the listener was trying to get to. How did you find out? Well, this is how you find out. You have to be sincere with yourself. Keep keep a log of all of your negative emotions. Don't fight with them. Don't argue with them. Don't feel bad about them. Don't beat yourself. Don't call yourself uh, a sinner, an incompetent sinner. No. That's what you are. You, you have these emotional tendencies from other lives. They're there. It's like a closet full full of dirty laundry. Uh, you're not going to snap your snap your finger and the laundry is going to get done for you. You have to launder it yourself, iron and put the clo- the clean clothes back up. So you got to take a look at this past. Don't be ashamed of it. It is what you are. And if God is not ashamed of you and doesn't condemn you, why should you? So that's the first thing you have to overcome. Once you treat yourself with love like this, and you understand and you learn of what you are, then what's left? What's left is your guide, the creator, will start talking to you and will start showing you these things, will start giving you astral travels, will show you your past, will show you the past of other people, will show you secrets of the universe, science, all kinds of stuff will come to you. There are no secrets. If we go back to Ecclesiastes, there's no nothing new under the sun. There's no secrets in the universe. The only secret there is, is what you hide from yourself. You keep it secret because you're afraid of it. Don't be afraid of what you are. Dig it up. Put it in front of you. Look at it. But look at it with love. Because what you are, you made. Nobody else did. It's your child. 
It's just like a child. If you have a if 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 you have a son or a daughter, and they're naughty, what are you going to do? Are you going to put them in a torture chamber? Are you going to strike them into compliance, or are you going to use your best love and intelligence to make sure that they grow up to be responsible, sincere, helpful citizens? The same way you treat your children is the same way you have to treat yourself. So don't forget the golden rule. Love yourself as you would love your neighbor. And then love your God with all of your strength, heart, soul, and power. There's the formula. Robert Maxim, our guest on This Week in America. You can listen to this uh, podcast, all of the other shows that we did with Robert as well, by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, YouTube as well. You can direct link by going to the Videos tab on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. So if you're listening on, on radio or streaming this, you can actually see the video by going to, uh, to YouTube. Time left for a couple more questions. When Christ died and rose from the dead... Was that a miracle or a near-death experience? It was more of a near-death experience. And biblically speaking, note that after death had transpired, and this can be clinically proven, Roman centurion, centurion came over, stabbed his side, blood and water gushed out. Now, is that possible from someone that has been dead for several minutes? Not to the degree that's described there. So, let's think about that death again. Uh, blood begins to cauterize, begins to get cold in the body. Fluid from the lungs, yeah, it can, it can collect, but as far as blood is concerned, we have to look at, uh, at medical transitioning here to understand that what we term dead is what people saw. But really, what we're dealing with is a near-death experience. Boy, that's, that's interesting. And there's so much there to digest, as with so many of the questions. Uh, and an excellent group of questions, by the way, submitted by the... Uh, the listeners and the viewers, and we encourage yours. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, the question tab there, the comments. Please submit a question for Robert. Go to Robert's website and, and do the same. Question, how long is there between lives? Who and hmm. why determines when we return? It could be days, could be months, could be centuries. Uh, your higher consciousness, the one I was describing as a higher level of intelligence, that's what determines when you return. Uh, they know when would be the best time. There would be people in, in the time that you related to in the past, so you can relate with them again, the choice of parents, the association you're going to build there, the, the events that are going to be happening in the world that you need to experience. Uh, this higher intelligence knows that. So it sets up a return trip when all of those conditions are prime for your return. Robert Maxim has been our guest on the program. Boy, the time has gone by so quickly. Wanted to leave a couple of minutes here at the end where we can talk about some of the exciting things that you've got going. Let's talk about the movie again. And is there a way that we can follow along so we understand what's happening, the, the progress, and a way that we can participate to, uh, to be supportive of the project. Oh, thank you for saying that. As a matter of fact, uh, yes. Um, there is an expense to creating the screenplay, and of course I work for a living. Uh, <laughs> so it is very difficult to spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars on screenplay development when uh, you know we, you're kind of paycheck to paycheck in a way. In real uh, life, yes. My, yeah, and I'm trying my best to fund myself, but I am putting the word out there that indeed I need help. Uh, and I, I've opened up a GoFundMe account. Uh, if anybody, 
anybody's heart is softened and touched and they want to be supportive, boy, could I use the help. Uh, I've got to come up with $17,000 to to fund the screenplay. Uh, and that's no small pocket change. No, no, not at all. Uh, now, most individuals will, will wonder, well, why, if a movie movie house wants to pick you up, why do you have to pay for the screenplay? Well, consider this. The screenplay is what determines the plot and how the movie is going to go forward. So I could sell the rights to the movie company, and they can do with it whatever they, they wish. And then what message are you going to get from that? I don't want that to happen. So... The agreement is that I will be able to direct the development of the screenplay and keep the spirit of, of the teachings that have been given to me. And that's that's a privilege, and that's why I'm fighting so hard to, to try to pay for the screenplay and have things done correctly. Not the Hollywood way, yes. but the higher way. I have to protect that, and it has to be pristine, the way that it was given. Um, I will be coming up with even more videos uh, that will sh- that will show uh, these other worlds. Uh, the movie company is impressed with the graphics, with the videos, and they are all aligned to represent these other dimensions and these other worlds the way they are. This is going to be... Rick, can you imagine? Nothing like this has ever been done. It's unique. Uh, I just got done looking at Star Wars. I mean, look at that message of killing and and uh, and, and, and rocketry being used in high tech. Uh, the story of legacy, the technology that is going to show, and and the actual drama of life, the realistic drama of life, is just invaluable. It has to be shown this way. And this is why... I beg for help. If anybody can do it, in the next couple of days, I will be putting something, something on my website asking for the support. And um, uh, trust me that if you put your name down, I'll make sure it goes with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what can you happen. Donate it. <laughs> yeah, you see that you hear this so often where someone sells the rights, they're totally disappointed. It's not at all what they had in mind creatively. Uh, With what you're doing, it's creative, it's philosophical, it's on a whole number of levels. So this way you have control. You are actually, here's the screenplay. I I did it, I paid for it, here's what I want. That is correct. And there's, there's no chance of misrepresenting someone that I have both physically and spiritually live with, gosh, for 50, 50 years. That, yes. Yeah, and this is something else that I will display in in the LAX Hilton uh, convention. I am going to show pictures of actual alien beings that have been photographed. And many of the beings that I physically met, I met about... 14 of them throughout my life. Yes, face-to-face, handshake, yes. I've met about 14 physical alien beings, and they have taught me many things. Even when I was in high school, uh, if you attend that conference, you will see pictures of literally beings that look just like them. Uh, and I will I will prove through these photographs, that they are actually non-earthly. So don't miss it. If you can, if you are in L.A. and you can attend the LAX Hilton on February the 8th at 6 p.m., look for Robert Maxim. Uh, the title of the presentation will be What NASA Hides. Ooh, I like that. Got my attention right away. <laughs> And you know, I was I was an intern in NASA for six years, so I will be showing a lot of this, a lot of stuff that I pulled out of there as well. A lot of things that they hide and they have massaged and changed and erased and covered over. Um, 
but that's not all. I will also show pictures from the European Union space program. And what about the Russian space program? Hmm. Well, Don't miss it. All of that information, Dave's information, and believe me, if you're interested, jump on it now. Because uh, what you keep adding when you go to these cities, you keep adding extra little seminars because they sell out so quickly. So get information now, act now at Robert's website, which is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Robert Maxim, our guest in the program, go to our website thisweekinamerica.us and link on directly to get all of that information. Robert, as always, a pleasure. Great that we're uh, back together here now. We're both uh, settled and ready to go forward. We'll be back in a few weeks with an, uh, another program. Thank you for being with us on the program. As always, it's fun. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. And uh, my information is out there on the website. If anybody wants to be in contact with me, I never say no. And you can Everyone all check it welcomed. out. Check it out. And uh, questions as well at either Robert's website or our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back in just a couple minutes. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.